and welcome back everyone to the YOLO series. In this video, we'll be discussing about the scaled YOLO v4. The scaled YOLO v4 is one of the latest versions of YOLO, uh, which were released after the YOLO v4 model. I intentionally use this picture to signify the topic that we're going to discuss in this video. The YOLO v4 model was scaled uh, into a larger version, which is called the, the scale daily before, and this is going to be the model that we're going to discuss in this video. So the contents of uh, this lecture will include an introduction to the scale daily before model. Second, we'll be looking at the principles of model scaling, and on the third section, we'll be talking about how the authors of the scale daily v4 paper uh, designed the model and finally we'll take a look at an ablation study and the results from the model in the previous video we have discussed about yolo v4's architecture and how it became the state-of-the-art model for the object detection task offering the best performance in terms of both speed and accuracy but it could not beat the Google's efficient debt in terms of overall accuracy on the COCO dataset. So the authors of YOLO v4 came back and pushed YOLO v4 model forward by scaling its design and thus outperforming the benchmarks of efficient debt. And this resulted in the invention of the scaled YOLO v4 model. So right after they finished their work in the original YOLO v4, the authors came back and looked at that Google's sufficient debt was outperforming their previous model. So they tried to redesign the YOLO v4 model by scaling it larger and uh, giving it a title known as scaled YOLO v4. The efficient debt family of models has been the preferred object detection model since it was published by Google Research or Brain Team. And the most novel contribution in the efficient debt paper was to think strategically about how to scale object detection models up and down. So previously, when we talked about the efficient net, uh, which is kind of like a classification network, the, the team from Google Research scaled the efficient net architecture by using uh, three different methods. The first one is by increasing the image input resolution. So they tried to make the resolution of the image larger and that will improve the performance. The second one is the scaling the width of the convolutional network layer, uh, which is uh, just basically increasing the number of channels. So the width in this picture uh, indicates the number of channels in different layers. And the resolution is shown uh, by the thickness of a single box. And uh, when you increase the resolution, it means you're stretching the box. And when you increase the number of channels, it means you're making it wider. And the third technique that they used was scaling the depths of the convolutional layers, which means they're going to increase uh, more layers so that they can build a model that is more deep and that could be able to improves the performance of the model. And finally, they used what is known as compound scaling, which is basically a combination of all of these techniques by making the, the model have a higher resolution input, a deeper network, and a large number of channels. So before they wrote the paper, uh, they had to select some scaling factors that could be used in order to scale the 
YOLO V4 model in the same manner as the efficient debt. So they wanted to use the same kind of technique, uh, which was originally provided by the authors of the efficient net paper. And some factors are considered when working on model scaling for object detection task. And uh, we can let the scaling factors that can be used to adjust the image size, the number of layers, and the number of channels as alpha, beta, and gamma respectively. And in this table, we can see that uh, we are uh, trying to compare the computational cost of three, three different types of networks. Uh, the first one is a resonant layer, the second one is ResX layer, and the third one is a dark layer. And on the second column, we can see the computational cost for the three types of models. And uh, we are going to assign the computational cost to the variables R, X, and D. And on the remaining columns, uh, we're going to see how the computational cost increases uh, when we change the scaling factors uh, with regards to the image size, the number of layers, and the number of channels. So alpha is responsible for scaling the resolution of the input. So when we change alpha or make it larger in order to increase the resolution, uh, it is going to increase the computational cost for each of the layers in a square manner. And uh, when we change beta, which is going to control the number of layers, it's going to increase uh, linearly, and gamma is also uh, in, increases the computational cost in a square manner. So for the K-layer CNNs with B-layer, uh, B-base layer channels, when these scaling factors vary, the corresponding changes on flops are shown on the table. So K, uh, in this case, indicates uh, the variable uh, which is going to control the number of uh, layers. And the B is uh, with regards to the layer channels or the number of channels. And W and H stand uh, for the width and height of the input resolution. So the scaling size, depth, and width cause increase in the computation cost. And they respectively show the square linear and square increase, uh, which, we, which we have discussed in the previous slide. So uh, one of the things that you notice when reading the scale v 4 paper is that they use the term uh, CSPI using the model. And what does it mean by CSPI's YOLO v4. Uh, before we talk about the architecture design, uh, let us look at some of the advantages of using CSP connections. So uh, we have previously discussed in a previous video about CSP and uh, the CSP stands for uh, cross-stage partial networks. And what it means basically is half of the signal uh, is going through the main paths and will generate uh, more semantic information with a large receiving field. So uh, we're going to send the half of or partial uh, number of channels to one path and it's going to pre preserve the semantic information since we have a large receiving field. And the other half uh, that is being bypassed would preserve more spatial information uh, with a small uh, perceiving field. So semantic information means the complexity of the information on the represented by the pixels in the image. And the spatial information is the uh, spatial 
orientation or the height and width or the, the relationship that the pixels have uh, that are located next to each other. So the original uh, YOLO v4 model only used CSP in the backbone of the network and not in the PANnet, NEC, and SPP. So uh, when we discussed about the YOLO v4 paper, we have seen the overall architecture of YOLO v4, and it's made up of the backbone, the neck, and the head. And the backbone use a CSP Darknet 53, and we only uh, introduced the CSP concept only on the backbone of the overall architecture. But the authors of Scale Yolo V4 thought about what they did in Yolo V4, and they asked themselves, uh, what if they used the CSP concept on the other parts of the network? So previously, the neck of the network and the SPP block did not have a CSP block. Uh, they used the traditional convolutional block. So the, when they came, came up with the term CSPizing the YOLO v4 model, it's basically introducing the CSP method to other layers of the network to reduce the computational cost and improve performance. So in order to improve the performance of a detection network, and reduce its computational cost so that it can be used on different devices, the first thing that one can do is using the CSP concept to reduce the computational cost. And uh, by changing the parameters for scaling the resolution, the input resolution, the depth of the network, and the width of the network, which is increasing the number of channels. So by combining all of these factors, they managed to come up with a new model. So we have discussed in the YOLO v4 architecture model about how using cross-stage partial strategy reduces the computation costs. And in the scaled YOLO v4 paper, the authors often write that they CSPIs a given portion of the network. They only CSPI the backbone of the network. And the term to CSPI means to apply the concepts laid out in the cross-stage partial networks paper uh, written by Wang Qinyu. So CSPI just means introducing the CSP concept onto the model. In brief, uh, CSPNet splits the input into two paths. Uh, one performs convolutions, and the other one does not perform any convolution, and they will be concatenated or fused at the output. So when CSPNet is applied to the previous uh, layers, the ResNet, ResNext, and DarkNet layers, and the changes were preserved in the amount of computations. Uh, they provided the results in the table, uh, which is provided here. And they found that introducing the CSP concept to all of these networks can effectively reduce the amount of computations in terms of flops on ResNet, ResNext, and DarkNet by 23.5. 46.7 and 50% respectively. So as you can see on the second column, this was the original uh, computation cost for a single res layer, res, res X layer and dark layer. And on the third column, we can see that uh, there will be a reduced, uh, a new uh, computational cost after the introduction of the CSP concept to these layers. And uh, it's very hard to uh, see the difference between the original one and the new one, uh, but uh, we can see that uh, 
there was significant improvement uh, between the two. So therefore, CSPI's models are used as the best model for performing model scaling. So uh, how did they compute uh, the computational cost for a single layer? And in this uh, slide, uh, we'll take a look at how to get the numbers uh, which are mentioned on the paper. So uh, we're going to take a look at the dark layer uh, because it's going to be our main concern because we're going to see SPIs, the dark layer of YOLO v4 model. The original computation cost, as you can see, is five times WH KB square. And how did they get this number? And after the introduction of CSP, uh, how did they get uh, this result? So in a normal darkening layer, uh, there will be a convolution, a three by three convolution with B number of channels. And basically uh, that original YOLO V3 backbone has a bunch of residual blocks and a single residual block is indicated by this box. And a residual block is just a block that sends uh, a part of the information directly without performing any convolutions. And they send another partition uh, to perform two convolutions, one of which is one by one, and the other one is three by three. And the first one has a half number of channels half of the original number of channels, and the second one will have the same as the input. And we perform the residual blocks k times, so we repeat them k times, and that will be the overall computational cost for the darkening layer. So in order to get this number, uh, what we can do is multiply the width and height of the input multiplied by the number of channels, B. And uh, this part, uh, which is uh, found under the parenthesis, uh, is computed by using the first one by one convolution with uh, half number of channels. So we're going to multiply the width uh, the height and the number of channels from the input with, and we're going to convolve it with a one by one kernel with half number of uh, channels. So that's the overall computation cost for the first output. And for the second one, uh, we're going to multiply the width, height, and half number of channels because the output from the one by one kernel uh, is going to have half of the original uh, number of channels B. And we're going to convolve it with a, uh, with a kernel size of three by three, uh, which has a depth of B. And the overall computation for the second part uh, will be this one. So for one residual block, uh, we're going to have the sum of the first one and the second one. And since we are going to uh, repeat the residual block k times, we're going to multiply by k. And finally, uh, we can take the WHB term. Uh, first, we can multiply the b, the b's, and we get a b squared term. And uh, we can isolate these terms, WHB square, and take them out of the parentheses. And we have uh, half from the first term, and we have uh, 9 over 2, which is 3 by 3 is a 9. And we have the 1 over 2 term on the left side. And then finally, uh, the results will be 5WHKB square. And after performing the CSP concept, uh, the 
First, we're going to use a three by three kernel, then which has B number of channels. And we're going to split the width of the network, which is the number of channels into two. So here, as you can see, we have only half of the number of channels on both sides. Then on both sides, we're going to perform a one by one convolution. Then on, on the first pass, we're going to directly send it without performing any convolutions. And on the second pass, uh, we're going to introduce the original uh, residual blocks, k times, but the only difference is the number of channels. Uh, here we used uh, one half of b for the one by one convolution, but for the three by three convolution, we also use the same half number of channels uh, because we want to use the same number of uh, gross weight uh, when using a CSB block. And uh, finally, after performing this residual block k times, uh, we're going to perform a one one by one convolution uh, with half uh, of b number of channels. And we're going to concatenate it with the original half number of channels. And the output will be uh, b number of channels. And finally, we perform one more one by one convolution. So this is basically the CSP concept when it's applied to the original darknet. And in order to get the computational cost after introducing the CSP concept, uh, here we are, it's a little bit sophisticated because we, are, we have uh, a bunch of convolutions. Here we only had the residual blocks. So the, for the first term, uh, this is number one we have a one by one by half of B, which is the kernel size. And here, this is the input resolution. We have the width, the height, and the number of channels will be B over two. Since we're going to multiply both by convolving the kernel over the input, uh, the overall computation for the first term uh, will be this one. And for the second term, uh, before going to the residual block, we're also going to have the same output, which is wh b over 2 by 1 by 1, 1 over 2b. And we're going to sum it with the third term, uh, which is going to be the overall computation cost for the residual block, which is given by the input is WH uh, B over 2, and uh, we're going to convolve it with a one by one kernel with B over 2 number of channels. And uh, this is going to be the, the first kernel. And for the second one, we're going to multiply the output from the first convolution and uh, we're going to convolve it with a kernel size of three by three with half number of channels. And by combining these two, we can form the overall computation for the residual block. And since we can add any number of residual blocks k times, where k is the uh, number of residual blocks or repetitions, we're going to multiply the third uh, term by k. Then finally, we're going to have the one by one convolution. So the WHB will be the input uh, to this kernel. And one by one by B half will be the uh, kernel, which is going to convolve this input. And this is going to be the overall computation cost for the fourth term. And then finally, for the fifth term, after performing the concatenation, we're going to do the same. Uh, since uh, we have, uh, here we're going to have double the number of channels since we concatenate. And one by one by B will be the kernel that we're going to use. So after reducing this term, uh, we can finally get uh, the term uh, that was mentioned on the paper. 
So uh, we have seen what CSPI is in all of the four means, but uh, let's uh, take let's take a look at of the overall architecture for a scale YOLO v4 after the introduction of uh, cross-stage partial network. And for general GPUs, YOLO v4 is redesigned to YOLO v4 CSP. So they wanted to create a base model known as YOLO v4 CSP after CSP ising the backbone, the neck, and the SPP. As I've already mentioned in the original Yolo V4 paper, they only introduced the CSP to the backbone. But in terms of uh, the scale Yolo V4, the first CSP stage is converted to the original darknet residual layer. So the only modification that they made to the backbone of Yolo V4 was restoring the first CSP stage to residual layer. Uh, we will see why they did this on the next slide. On the neck part of the network, the PAN, the PaaS aggregation architecture is also CSPized and mesh activation is used to reduce computation by 40%. On the original YOLO v4 paper, the leaky relu activation function was used on the neck part of the network. But in the case of scanlulu v4, when they used the mesh activation function and replaced the normal convolution by CSP ones, they managed to reduce the computation cost by 40%. And for the SPP block, uh, which is located between the backbone and the neck part of the network, the same idea was borrowed and implemented in CSP PAN too. So we also CSPIs the SPP block. Now let's take a deep dive and take a look at what CSPIing the backbone means. On the right side, we can see the CSP Darknet 53 and the Darknet 53 model from the YOLO v3 paper. So this is original backbone for YOLO v3, and, and this is the backbone for YOLO v4. The amount of computation of each CSP darknet stage is given by this term. So each of the CSP blocks uh, that are shown by the light blue boxes, their computation cost is given by this term. According to the previous section, the CSP darknet stage will have a better computational advantage over darknet stage only when k is greater than one is satisfied. So k is basically the number of blocks, CSP blocks that we're using. So CSP one means k is equal to one and we're only using one CSP block. And in this, for the second one, we're using it two times, so k is equal to two. But according to the paper of scale dealer v4, when k is uh, equal to one, which is for the first block, they didn't get a better performance. So when they CSPI the original residual block to CSP for k equals to one, uh, there is no change. It only works when k is greater than 1. So when they replace all of the residual blocks to CSP ones, when k is greater than 1, the performance is better. But in case when the k is equal to 1, they didn't get the computational advantage or the computational cost didn't reduce. So what they did was just take the first block and replace it by the original residual block because the residual block has a less computation cost uh, compared to the CSP one. But for the rest, they preserved the CSP blocks as they are. 
So the number of residual layer owned by each stage in the CSP darknet 53 is given by 12884. And in order to get a better speed or accuracy trade-off, the first CSP stage is converted into the original darknet residual layer. So what CSPizing the backbone basically means is just replace the first CSP block into the original residual block. But for the rest, you can preserve uh, the original CSP blocks as they are from the Yolo v4 backbone. Next, they CSP is the neck of the Yolo v4 model. And uh, from a previous video, we have seen that the neck of Yolo v4 is basically a pass aggregation network. And on the original YOLO v4, we used normal convolutions instead of CSP on the neck part of the network. So what CSPizing the neck means is replacing these convolutions by a CSP one. So con x5 or uh, con con times five is basically performing five convolutions. And when we expand this term, uh, it basically includes a one by one convolution and a three by three convolution, uh, which are performed two times. And uh, we change the number of channels, uh, the number of channels used for a one by one filter is C. And in the case of a three by three kernel, it's two times C. And finally, after we perform the one by one and three by three ones, uh, we can perform one last one by one convolution. And this is basically the five convolutions that they use on the neck part of the network. And CSPizing these convolutions means branching out the output from the first one by one convolution. So here we have the first branch and the second branch. On the first partition, we don't perform any convolutions. And for the second part, uh, we're going to perform uh, these, the remaining four convolutions, one by one and three by three convolutions. And the only difference is the number of channels stays the same for all of the kernels for the CSP one, but for the original Yolo before we use, uh, we use uh, two times the number of channels for the three by three kernels. Finally, we concatenate the output from the two partitions. And since we have C number of channels from one side and we have another C, when we concatenate, uh, we have the number of channels grows to 2C. And finally, we perform one more one by one convolution. So we basically replace all of these convolutions by the CSP version. And we're going to call it CSPI's CONVs for YOLO v4 CSP base model. And when we uh, change the terms from the original YOLO v4 model, uh, we were just going to uh, replace in the, all of the con by five by CSPI's cons on the neck part of the network. Third, uh, we are going to uh, see what CSPI'sing SPP block means. On the path from the backbone of the network to the neck part of the network, we have seen uh, the SPP block uh, was used in between. And uh, before the SPP block, uh, we performed uh, three convolutions. That's what the conv by three represents, both on the top and at the bottom. And uh, when we dissect this block and uh, take a look at the inside, 
uh, we can see that the, the first three convolutions are a one by one and three by three convolutions. And the number of channels for the one by one filters is uh, BOR2. And we have B number of channels for the three by three filter. This is a conv times three. Then it goes inside to the SPP block, and then we perform max pooling by using different number of grids, 5, 9, and 13, and we concatenate the output from uh, all of these filters, and we perform uh, another conv3 at the bottom. And when we CSPI this part of the network, we're going to split the first convolution into two, and B number of channels is going to be split into uh, B over two, and we send the first part directly to the bottom, and uh, we perform the remaining three by three and one by one convolutions on the second part, and we send it to the SPP block, and we perform a three by three convolution, and then finally we add after performing concatenation, we're going to add the last one by one convolution. And finally, when we replace the SPP block from the original YOLO v4 model by the CSPI SPP, uh, it's going to look like as the picture shown at the bottom. Now we are done with uh, creating the base YOLO v4 CSP model. And by using this base model, they wanted to use uh, different models for different devices. As you know, YOLO v4 has different versions of the model for use on different types of devices. So if we want to run the YOLO v4 model on edge devices or low-end devices, uh, we have to use the YOLO v4 tiny. And it, this model is basically smaller than the original YOLO v4 model. And lightweight models are different from large models in that their parameter utilization efficiency must be higher and are used in low-end devices. So they have to utilize the parameter efficiency. And since memory bandwidths, memory access cost, MECs, and DRAM traffic should also be considered when deploying uh, large models on low-end devices. We have to take into consideration how much memory that we're using and uh, how to access the access cost for memory and the DRAM traffic or the dynamic RAM. And the network with efficient parameter utilization is analyzed, such as the computation load, load of the dense net and OSC net, where G means the growth rate. So for the base uh, scale YOLO v4 model, we have used a CSP darknet model. But for the YOLO v4 tiny, uh, they didn't use the CSP darknet. What they used is uh, a network known as OSA NATE. So what is this new model for the YOLO v4 tiny, the OSA NET block? In the original DenseNet paper, each layer obtains additional inputs from all preceding layers and passes on its own feature maps to all subsequent layers, and concatenation is used. So on the original uh, DenseNet, if you have a feature map uh, F and you have the number of channels, you perform convolutions and you get the output, a new output, and you concatenate the output with the original input. Then you perform convolutions 
a bunch of times and you concatenate the output with the and preserve the original input. So on each layer, you're going to produce a new output and then you're going to concatenate it with the uh, original input. As, so you have dense connections on every layer. So dense connection makes later intermediate layers produce the features that are better but also similar to the features from former layers. So when you are performing this kind of operation, uh, you're going to produce features which might be better but are also similar to the former layers. On the ResNet paper, we have seen that the DenseNet outperforms ResNet because it segregates uh, the channel and we know uh, which features are coming from uh, which layer or uh, it preserves some of the original information but and uh, some of when we looked at the resnet paper we have seen that there are correlations between uh, the information that's uh, outputted by each layer and in the case of dense nets they're going to be se segregated so they're not correlated with one another but the problem with dense net is that in this case the final layer is not required to learn to aggregate both features because they're representing red redundant information because the features that are going to output it from each layer are going to be also similar from the features of the former layers, they're going to contain redundant information when we reach the last layer. So in order to solve this problem, the authors of the one-shot aggregation or OSA module they designed a model that can aggregate the feature in the last layer at once. So instead of concatenating the output directly to the input on each layer, in case of one-shot ag uh, aggregation, uh, we just send the output directly to the last layer and we merge them together once uh, we reach the last layer. So here, uh, as we can see on the diagram, this is the dense net and this is the one-shot aggregation network. So for the one-shot aggregation network, we're going to perform convolutions first. Once we finish performing the convolutions, we're going to concatenate them only when we reach the last layer and then finally we perform one more one by one convolution and then we have the the last feature map representation and the speed of dense net is slower mainly because of high memory access cost and energy consumption caused by dense connections in dense net so one of the reasons that they decided to replace the dense net by the OSI net is because the dense net is slower because, because of its dense connections, because we are concatenating and performing convolutions before reaching the last layer. But VOVNet, which is a network based on the one-shot aggregation method, is intended to solve the problem of dense net, and the performance of the target detection model based on VOVNet exceeds the model based on DenseNet, and OSA only aggregates all of the previous layers at the end, and this change will solve the problem of DenseNet because the number of input channels for each layer is fixed, and the number of output channels can be made consistent with the input to obtain the smallest memory access cost. Then, once they decided to use OSA Net, for Yolo v4 Tiny, 
instead of the dense net. The, uh, they tried to compare the computation cost between these two layers. And OEC improves uh, GPU computation efficiency and has much less memory access cost than that of the dense block. And the computation cost is much slower uh, compared to the dense layer because the order of computation complexity of dense net is w -A -B, the big O of W, H, G, B, and K, uh, which is this term. And that of OS in it is the big O of the maximum of W, H, B, G, and W, H, K, G squared. And the tiny model is designed with the help of OACNet, which has a smaller computational com uh, complexity. So, and once they decided to use the OACNet, then they wanted to CSPI the OACNet. They wanted to introduce the concept of CSP on this network. And gradient uh, truncation between computational block of the CSP OS in it is performed to get the best calculation speed. And for example, uh, as we can see from this table, B channels of the base layer and the KG channels generated by the computational block and split them into two paths with equal channel numbers, which is B plus KG divided by two. So if B represents the uh, the incoming number of channels, and G uh, represents the channels which are generated by the computational block. Then, we've, after performing K number of convolutions, we basically have K times G plus the original number of B concatenated together by using one-shot aggregation. We split them into two paths by using C, CSP, and partial in computational block. And the CSP path just contains the KG terms. And the, the remaining ones, the partial in the computational block, is going to contain a B plus KG divided by two terms. And the CSP OS net is designed to dynamically adjust the channel allocation. When evaluating the computational cost of low-end devices, power consumption must, be, must also be considered. And the biggest factor affecting power consumption is the memory access cost, which is also known as the MAC. And the MAC can be computed by the following formula. Uh, we have the H times W multiplied by the incoming number of channels and the outgoing plus uh, this term. And by calculating the geometric inequality, the minimum min uh, memory access cost when Cn is equal to C out can be derived. So we want to reduce the memory access cost because it affects the power consumption for low-end devices. And to minimize this term, we want the Cn and C out to be equal And this is basically what minimizing the CIO means. And the convolutional input-output, uh, which is the acronym CIO, is an indicator that can measure the status of DRAM IO. So we want to reduce the memory access cost, and we also want to minimize the convolutional input-output because it's a a measure of the status of the DRAM input output. And the, com the convolutional input output of OSA CSP and the designed CSP OS Senate is represented by in this table. And this is the CIO for the original one. And uh, the second column represents for the CSP one. And the third one represents the partial in CB which is the CSP OS in it. And when KG is greater than B divided by two, the proposed CSP OS in it can obtain the base CIO. 
which means when the kg term is greater than b divided by 2, the CSP or SNET can obtain the best CIO. So by putting all of these concepts together in order to build and scale the YOLO v4 tiny model, uh, we can summarize these concepts on this slide. So the YOLO v4 tiny is designed for low-end GPU device. And we want to scale this model, the YOLO v4 tiny model, to improve the performance for low-end devices. And the CSPOA Senate with partial and computational block architecture is used to form the backbone of the YOLO v4 tiny. So we used we replaced the CSP Darknet 53 of the original base model by the CSP OS net and G is equal to B uh, equal to 2 is set as the growth rate and make it grow by B over 2 plus KG is equal to B to B at the end. And we basically set the growth rate to 2. And through calculation, k is equal to 3 is deduced, and its architecture is shown on the next slide. So this is basically the overall architecture for the scaled YOLO v4 tiny. And when somebody gives you the blueprint for the architecture of a network, it might be, uh, it might seem very complicated at first sight. But once you understand the basic, the basic building blocks of that architecture, it's just basically repeating or changing that building block uh, for the rest of the network. And the basic building block in the case of YOLO v4 Tiny uh, can be shown on this diagram. And what we have seen before, the OSNet or the one-shot aggregation is basically uh, concatenating the output from each of the convolutions at once, once reach uh, the last layer. And we have also CSPIs the OS in it, which means we have to split the original input into two partitions, and we send the first one directly. And for the first case, we have 2G number of channels. And when we split it into two, we have G on the left side and we have 1G on the right side. For the second part, we send it, uh, for the first part, we send it directly to the last layer. And for the second partition, uh, we also send it directly and we also perform uh, two three by three convolutions. And we concatenate the output from these two convolutions once the convolutions are performed. And this is basically the OSA concept. And once we concatenate the output from these two convolutions, uh, we're going to perform one more uh, one by one convolution. And we're going to merge all of uh, the channels once we, we reach the last layer. So this block is the basic building block for YOLO v4 Tiny, which uses both the CSP concept uh, that's splitting the number of channels and aggregating the output from all of the convolutions at once by using the concept of one-shot aggregation. So when we see the overall architecture, if we have an input of 416 by 416, uh, we perform some uh, three by three convolutions and the dimensions will be reduced since we're using a stride of two. And finally, when we reach uh, this stage, we split the 64 channels to 32 and 32. Uh, we perform uh, this uh, convolution on the second path, and we concatenate uh, the output from uh, these two convolutions here. And finally, we perform one more one by one convolution. And when we merge the 32 channels here and the 64 coming from uh, this side, overall we have 128. Uh, we also perform max pulling 
and then uh, we also split the 128 channels. We perform uh, the base. Uh, we perform the same operation as we did before and also here we also do the same and then finally uh, we have two heads uh, when we reach the bottom part of the network that's all for YOLO v4 tiny uh, which is used for low-end devices but what about for normal GPUs uh, so we have to use the base YOLO v4 large model and scale it for uh, cloud GPUs. So YOLO v4 large was uh, originally designed for cloud GPUs and the main purpose is to achieve high accuracy for object detection. And they have already designed the CSPI's model of YOLO v4 and they named this base model as YOLO v4P5. And after the scaling procedure, they scaled it up to YOLO v4P6 and YOLO v4P7. And YOLO v4P6 can reach real-time performance at 30 frames per second video when the width scaling factor is equal to 1. And YOLO v4P7 can reach real-time performance at 16 frames per second video when the width scaling factor is equal to 1.25. So uh, let's uh, take a look at how they scaled the YOLO v4 large model to be used by cloud GPUs. In the backbone section, change the original size 12884 to CSP darknet of the CSP Darknet 53 to 1, 3, 15, 15, and 7. So uh, when we uh, when we talked about the YOLO v4 model, we, the number of repetitions were 1, 2, uh, 8, 8, and 4. But in the case of uh, the scaled YOLO v4 model, they replaced the number of repetitions by 3, 15, 15, and 7. That's the first change that they made. So these are the 1, 3, 15, 15, and 7 here on the green boxes. And this is uh, represented by the green uh, label here. And uh, this is basically the neck of the network. And as you can see here, they also introduced the CSP concept on the neck part of the network, as we have seen before. And this is the, the first, uh, the base model, the base uh, scaled YOLO v4 model, which is named as YOLO v4 P5. And it has three heads, which perform detections on three different scales. But they also wanted to perform uh, detections on the top part of the network. So they also added more layers. And when you have more detection heads, that means you go, you're going to increase the performance of the network because uh, as we have discussed previously, uh, the main purpose of the path aggregation network or the feature pyramid network is to improve the detection of large objects and large objects can be detected uh, deeper in the network and this is the last SPB block and as we have discussed previously we have also uh, CSPI's the SPP block and it's represented by the CSP SPP and this is the uh, the pink color represents the SPP block. And uh, this is a, uh, if you, if you have seen the code for scale dealer before, you can see uh, that they used the term bottle, bottleneck CSP. And this bottleneck CSP is the, the basic concept of the cross-stage partial network. On the final section of this video, we're going to see the ablation study on the CSPI's model. 
ablation state is just a fancy name uh, used for measuring the performance of a model uh, by using different uh, training techniques. So the MS Coco dataset 2017 object detection uh, dataset was used in order to uh, measure the performance of the scale of the V4 model. And all models are trained from scratch, which means uh, we did not use transfer learning or we didn't, we didn't create a pre-trained model because that's going to affect our results. So in order for, for us to make a fair comparison, uh, all of the models were trained from scratch. And the Darknet 53 is used as a backbone and FPN with uh, SPP block and a path aggregation network with SPP block are represented as FPN SPP and PAN SPP. And these two are chosen as an X to design the Appalachian studies. And Likirelu and mesh activation functions were also tried. And the CSPI models have greatly reduced the amount of parameters and computations by 32% and brought improvements in both batch, uh, when the batch number or the batch size is eight, uh, throughput and average precision. So both the CD53, uh, CFPN, SPP mesh, and the CD53 CPAN SPP leaky have the same batch 8 throughput. And uh, the CD53 just represent the CSP Darknet 53 backbone that we have seen previously. And on the next part of the network, the FPN SPP and the PAN SPP were tried. So these are all of the models that they tried. Um, in order to perform the ablation study. So on the first row, we can see we have used a Darknet 53 backbone. We have used FPN and SPP as a neck with a leaky activation and got this result. And the number of parameters are shown here. As we go down, we they replaced the activation functions and they got a slight improvement and here they change, they introduced the CSP concept to the Darknet 53 backbone and used a feature pyramid network with, uh, together with the CSP concept and leaky activation function, which also gave slight improvements. And the number of parameters, uh, as you can see here, are going down. And when they introduced the, the path aggregation network, we can see that the number of parameters are larger than the feature pyramid network, but the performance is much better. And when they used the CSP concept on the path aggregation network, uh, which is tried by using different activation functions, it also gave a much improved average precision. So finally, the CSP Darknet 53 C CSP Pause Aggregation Network SPP with a mesh activation function is decided to be used as the best model, which is the last row in this table, as it results in the highest average precision in the, in the table as the backbone of YOLO v4 CSP. And an ablation study was also performed on the YOLO v4 tiny model. And the designed uh, partial computational block technique uh, can make the model more flexible because su such a design can be adjusted according to actual needs. And for the tiny model, we have already seen that we have created a new model known as OSNet. And when we introduce the CSP concept to the OSA net, we call it the COSA or the COSA. And the proposed COSA can get a higher average precision. So this is original tiny 
Yolo V4 Tiny model. And this is the backbone. Uh, we used a tiny uh, Darknet 53. They replaced the Darknet 53 by the OSINET uh, 1X 3X. And they got a unimproved result. And they also tried 2X 2X and 3X 1X. And these are just the type of convolutions that they used. And therefore, the CRSA 2x to x is finally chosen, which received the best speed or accuracy trade-off in the experiment for the Yolo V4 tiny architecture. So finally, they uh, settled for the CRSA 2x to x uh, which gave a trade-off between the average precision and the number of parameters used. Because, uh, as you can see, the, the model that gives the best result was the 1x3x in terms of average precision when compared to 2x2x. But when we compare the flops, the 1x3x has 7.6 uh, for the flops and the 2x2x only has 6.9. So we kind of... Uh, made a trade-off for the average precision so that we can reduce for the, the number of flops because the flops are considered uh, much more than the average precision values. And for the YOLO V4 large model, uh, 300 epochs are firstly executed and then followed by 150 epochs for fine-tuning using stronger data augmentation method. And average precision is improved with further fine-tuning using stronger data augmentation method. So we have seen for the YOLO v4 large model, uh, which was implemented on cloud GPUs, uh, we have used the YOLO v4 P5 base model. Then we scaled it to P6 and P7. And all of these have uh, five, in the, uh, the first one has three detection heads, and the second one has four, and the third one has uh, five. And uh, these are the epochs. And for fine tuning, they used 150 epochs. And this is average precision uh, for all of the models. Finally, uh, by changing the input resolution, why did they scale the YOLO V4 P5 model to P6 and P7? So as you increase the number of uh, input resolution, which is shown on the x-axis, you can expect to detect uh, smaller objects and when you increase the input resolution, the performance of the model improve, improves, but the trade-off is that the, the computational cost, because when you use higher resolution, it's going to cost you a lot in terms of memory and also computation. So, here on the graph, we can see that the blue curve represents the removal of P7 stage. So if we didn't consider the P7, which is shown on, on the second one, and just use the, the P5 and P6 part of the model, we can see that the model performance or its average precision increases and then it drops significantly when we increase the input resolution. And the yellow uh, represents after removing the P7 and P6 just by using the yellow P5. So the reason that they did not use only the yellow, P, uh, yellow V4 P5 is because when they increase the number of resolution, the average precision drops significantly and when they add the yellow uh, V4 P6, which is shown by the, the blue one, 
it just uh, increases and then drops. But when we use both the P7 and P6, we can see that there is a steady average precision uh, when we increase the input resolution. So it can be seen that YOLO V4 P7 has the best average precision at high input resolution, while YOLO V4 P7 without the P7 stage, and by after removing the P7 and P6, have the best average precision only at the medium and low resolutions. That's all for the scale YOLO V4 model. And thank you for watching this video.